Well, God has been good to all of us, and so we just want to thank him. You know, I'm, I'm, the, mo the longer I live, the more I'm seeing the necessity of being grateful to God. So many things could happen that have not happened in a negative sense. And uh, the Lord, back here about a year ago, he was saying, just be thankful. So I have been reflecting on that, just being thankful, you know. And boy, there's a lot of reasons to be thankful. Oh, my goodness. So many reasons to be thankful. And um, I, like I said, I talked with a friend of mine, and he was sharing about one pastor they had experienced about 17 deaths in their congregation during the time of uh, COVID. Brother Newry Hearn has a lot of pastoral friends overseas. Fifteen pastors has died. So if you don't believe it's a thankful time, you know, try and being what, horizontal? <laughs> God has been good to us, so I just want to really for us to pause and thank him for all that he is to us. Hallelujah. 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 You know, that, that scripture in Psalm 100 is, is very meaningful. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures through all generations. As I was praying and asking the Lord for today's service and you know, the Lord is a strategist. He does all things for his purpose and glory. Last week we talked uh, about words, the tongues, and uh, we, uh, but it was for a larger audience for those that would be watching by way of television as well. And uh, today he just began to speak some things to me and uh, And so I'm just going to share what he was sharing with me and to kind of call you to remembrance as to the purposes of God. He pointed me back to his, the ministry of Jesus where he, he proclaimed the kingdom of God. This was his message, the arrival of the kingdom. And the fact that the kingdom had arrived, the rule of God was in demonstration in his ministry. He taught in their synagogues. He taught openly outside the marketplace with the crowds. And... He began to heal the people of all oppressions of the devil. You know, when I think about that, God's people, many are undergoing a lot of oppressions. But taking you back to Jesus' ministry, Bible says in Acts 10, 38, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed 
of the devil. That's the Jesus ministry. And Matthew chapter 4. Says, and his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Matthew 4, 17 says, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then in Mark's gospel, we find, the Bible says in chapter 1, verse 14, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believe. To the Jew first and also to the Greeks. Bible goes on, or he pointed me further to concerning the heart of God has always been for his people, his creation, to worship and serve him. This has been the purpose of God. That's his heart. He wants his creation, that he made man in his image and likeness, and he put his spirit in man that man would willfully serve and worship him. Not out of a sense of uh, uh, having been made, but out of a love and a desire for God to worship and serve his creator. Matthew 12, just kind of taking you back through some scriptures here concerning the purposes of God. Matthew 12, let's see, it might be um, Mark 12, I'm sorry, it might be Mark chapter 12. Verse 29, and Jesus answered him, well, let me go in, 28 says, and one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning, together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Deuteronomy 8 says, we're talking now that the Lord's desire and heart has always been for his creation, his creatures that he made to serve him. God is to be worshipped. Chapter 8 says, all the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do. This is God speaking through Moses that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear to your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee, suffered thee to hunger, Fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out 
of the mouth of God. God's heart has always been for his people to serve him. Third thing was, reminded me, whenever his people strayed in their service and worship or affection for him, he always dealt with them throughout the Holy Scriptures. Deuteronomy 28, God began to put before Israel blessings and curses. Blessings for obedience and curses for disobedience. We realize this is the Old Testament, but we can learn from the scriptures. Am I right? We can learn things that are helpful for us in the new. We see things that were repulsive to the Lord and things uh, there are, according to Corinthians, for our learning. So, just to give you a little, I'm not going to read much of it, but just a little, just to, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. All these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you. You shall hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall you be in the field, Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your cattle, and increase of your kind, and uh, flocks and sheep. It goes on so many. And then verse 15 says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God to, I'm sorry, but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord your God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake you. Cursed shall thou be in the city, cursed shall thou be in the field, cursed shall be your basket and your store, cursed shall be the fruit of your body, the fruit of your land, the increase of your kind, the flocks of the sheep. Go on and say there's a lot of cursing. Um, so as I was saying, whenever his people strayed, especially in Israel, in their service, their worship and affection for him, he always dealt with them. Throughout the scriptures, we see that pattern. Fourth thing he mentioned was, Whenever Israel served him, it went well with them. When they straightly allowed their enemies to attack and bring them into bondage or oppressions came. Joshua 1, verse 7 says, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. But then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. All right, in 1 Corinthians here, I'm going to read another passage. I'm just kind of taking you through some uh, things that we may be reminded of uh, God's wonderful purposes for us even today is to love him. He set us free that we might grow and become instruments of his praise and glory to see others the same. First Corinthians 10 says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent. We should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, 
and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinketh he stand take heed, lest he fall. There is no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So it is true that when Israel, whenever Israel served him, it went well with them. When they strayed, he allowed their enemies to attack them and sometimes even bring them into bondage uh, to, with hopes that they would call on him. And when they cried out unto him, put away the false gods and the things of this nature, then God uh, raised up deliverers and restored them. So it tells us that God has his people for his own purposes. And he sets us free that we may serve him. He also mentioned here that when someone comes and gives his heart and life to Jesus, he comes, Christ comes in to live. He begins to set them free from all satanic domination. This is God's purpose, you know, he, when he come into our lives. And we often say, he begins to visit different rooms in our lives and compartments to free us up. The areas in our lives where demons still uh, have a, either a stronghold and they have not been fully surrendered to the Lord, areas of our will and whatever. And uh, so Lord in time and is dealing with us uh, and through the word and by his spirit began to free us up so that we can grow and develop more and to be Christ-like and then to, of course, be of greater service to his kingdom and help others. Uh, and then in the scriptures, Jesus set his people free from many demons. Some, the word, in the word he named, and some of those in the New Testament, these demonic powers were spirits of infirmity, unclean spirits, tormenting spirits, spirits of fear, deaf and dumb spirit, spirit of divination, deceiving spirits, spirit of error. These are just some of those that were mentioned in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, they have others. I didn't bother to record and write them down, but they're spirits that's mentioned also in the Old Testament. And um, so when we see Jesus as he came here on earth, one of the things that was very prevalent in his ministry, and you've got to agree with me, right? You look at in the Gospels, you see him delivering people from oppressions of Satan. Yes. Healing the sick and casting out demons were two things that he did so much. Where Satan was ruling, God cast them out so that God could rule in those areas of people's lives. Now, not, mind you, he didn't, this was not to the Gentiles that he went. This was to his people, the Jews, that he freed them up from all kinds of demonic power and oppression, heal all those sicknesses because he wanted them well. It is a fact that God wants us well. No matter what our condition in our physical bodies are, Jesus wants us well. He paid the price that we may be whole. And we, it is not uh, uh, presumptuous to believe and to say that Jesus wants me well if I'm suffering from some kind of sickness or disease. And um, also if there are areas in our lives where we can't seem to obey God, we want to, but can't seem to obey God, something is interfering, then we have a right to believe that God wants us free. Am I right? It is his good pleasure 
to give us the kingdom. It is his good pleasure to help us. So it's not something that we have to beg. I remember one preacher was sharing how he was praying so hard and just praying hard. God, God, do this. God, do this. He'll say, God, he'll say. He was just really praying. And the Lord said, stop that. He said, I want to, to heal the people much more than you. You don't have to plead and beg. Isn't that right? But we do have to believe. It is through faith. And so when we apply faith and believe God, God heals the sick. God wants, look at your neighbor and say, God wants you well. Yes, I know the devil doesn't want you well. The devil wants you sick. The devil wants you full of disease. He wants you tormented, tortured. Hallelujah. He wants you afraid. He wants you guilty. He wants all of these things. But Jesus wants you well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus set his people free from all of these things. Hallelujah. Demons can affect the will, the emotion, the intellect, the self-awareness, the ability to speak. They can uh, uh, affect all of these areas. In, uh, in the Bible, it points it out. Uh, demons speaking out through people affecting those areas of their lives. They are real. They're not some myth of some imagination. They're real. I know there are scholars that are intellectual, religious scholars that think it's a myth. But I'm telling you, it's not a myth. They are real. They are real. They exist today. And uh, for a person to act like they don't exist, they don't go away. They don't, they, they don't go away because a person don't believe in demons. Isn't that right? They're still real, saints. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They're still doing the same things, hindering God's people and people from being free to serve the living Christ. Still doing the same thing. You know, the Bible says the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come, thank you, Jesus, he said, that the sheep might have life. Eternal life. Divine life, the life of God flowing through our spirit, soul, and bodies. The life of God is why Christ died. Whoever has the Son has life. That's what John said. And so the demons affect people's lives. They come in through family background, occult. A false religion, early childhood pressures, emotional shocks, sinful acts or habits, idle words, they come in because they need a body to do their damage. Are you with me? They are real. So many people are being oppressed today through demonic spirits. But Jesus wants you well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus wants us well. Whenever a Christian will or cannot submit to God in areas of their lives, many times a demon may be suspect. I didn't say every time. I said many times a demon is suspect. There are, there, are, there are spirits that come. There are spirits called, so many names, but um, there's a spirit called a, 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 a haters of men, haters of women, spirits of hate, spirits of trauma, torment. They're real. So God has begun to deal with me about demonic powers. And he says, Larry, it's deliverance. Raw deliverance. In other words, people need deliverance. And, uh, some may be wondering, and I, I know when I talk about this subject, people get, people get a little quiet and everything. People get solemn, but it's real, saints. It's real. It's real. I've been delivered from demonic powers. I don't know how much, but I do know incidents specifically when God delivered me and... Um, 
Deliverance is a way that God shows mercy and compassion. It's not to be looked upon and frowned upon. It is God showing his compassion to his people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what he did. And many people were set free. Many were set free. And I am glad that it is his design to set us free. Unforgiveness opens the door for tormenting spirits. Can I say that again? Unforgiveness opens the door for tormenting spirits. They torment people. Bitterness opens the door for spirits of infirmity that attack the physical body, including arthritis and cancer. They are real. Jesus said the woman that was bent over and couldn't straighten up and he called her first a daughter of Abraham, right? And he said Satan had bound her, right? And he loosed her. Hallelujah. There are spirits that comes to bind God's people and hinder them. Sometimes in some disease, some physical conditions are the result of spirits of infirmity and until that spirit is cast out the condition will remain the same doctors they go to doctors the doctors can't find out can't see nothing wrong they, they don't know what because you can't see a demon with a microscope or x-ray isn't that right that means he's not there though Right? They're there. So, but the thing that I want you to understand is God wants his people free. The mind control spirits, they come in through drugs, pornography, ungodly music. They control the mind. Oppress people in the mind. The spirits that control the will stubborn spirits spirits of self-will spirits of rebellion spirits of pride spirits of lust spirits of witchcraft spirits of disobedience they're real they come to control the will of a person so that they cannot do the will of God but look at somebody say Jesus wants you free hallelujah they're controlling spirits. They're spirits that control, control people. Sometimes there's a possessive kind of relationship where a mother is possessive of her son or daughter or a father is possessive of his son or daughter. Unhealthy bonds. And they come in through various means. They can come in uh, through soul ties Controlling spirits, they can come in through soul ties. They can come in through Freemasonry, a family background, by being controlled by parents, involved in, people involved in the occult, people that have gone through divorce, separation, or bad relationships, a controlling church or denomination. They can come in through hypnosis, alcohol, drugs, meditation, and soul ties, and so on. The list goes on. Just want you to know that they're real. But when Jesus came, when Jesus came, he did more than teach. Right? He demonstrated the power of the kingdom. What good is a kingdom without the power? And if there's no power in our Theology demonstrated, then it can be reduced down to just a theory. If there's no power, are you hearing me? If there's no power, 
in our theology. If there's no power in our message of salvation, then it can be reduced down to just a theory. That's why Jesus said in the last day there be those that have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Saints of God, we're in the last days. And I want you to agree with me. These are not days where we play church. It's, it's, it's late for that kind of thing, isn't that right? If God wants to set us free, let's, let's, let's open our hearts. You know, it's not in man, but it's in God. Isn't that right? So the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. I remember the father said, I am the Lord, I change not. He still wants to set people free. He still wants to deliver the captives. He still wants to open the eyes of the blind. He still wants to set at liberty them that are bruised. He still wants to heal the broken hearts. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He still want to do it. Because Jesus is the reason for this season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Son of of God who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for the father was with him and the miracles and the things that Jesus did when he was here on earth made it very clear to us that the Father's will is for humanity. Those that come back to God and all of humanity that will believe, God wants them to taste and to be a partaker of the kingdom blessings. It is the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God wants us to be partakers. It is his desire to free us up. It is his yearning to free us up. It is his longing to free his people from oppressions of Satan. And demons look for a body so that they can do their evil deeds. It doesn't take much. You look at the news, you can see people that are controlled. They've got to be controlled by something. And when they're controlled by evil, they do evil. But look, if people that are controlled by evil can do evil, what should a person controlled by good do? Isn't that right? They should do good. God forbid that a person controlled by good should do evil. Isn't that right? That's a part of the reason why God wants us to taste of freedom and to be healed and made whole by his divine powers. You see those lights up there? They're lights. They are bright. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. So that means we give off. Illumination, we show people the way, we know the way, so we point others to the Christ, the Son of the living God. It's about Him. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You and I must desire to be free. Isn't that right? All the other things about this life will come, but we want to draw close to God. The Bible says draw close, draw near to him, and he will draw near to you. And that's a fact. Isn't that right? God's word can be trusted. If I draw near to him, he's going to draw near to me. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm done. That's what he wanted me to see. He just wanted me to say. So in conclusion, let's let the remainder of this year, let's target letting, allowing God to free us up from anything that impedes upon our spiritual growth and progress. Is that all right? That's what he wants. So if he wants that, then that's what I want. If he wants that, then that's what you want, right? Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You know what's so, and you've heard it earlier today, but I think in the prayer that Pam mentioned, it is not about us. Sometimes we get so caught up in us. It's not about us. It's about Christ. And he's in this place today. His spirit is here. His spirit is here. And if you can see Jesus, you're going to do all right. If you see Pastor Herring, I can't promise you you're going to do all right. <laughs> But if you see Jesus, if you hear Jesus in the songs, if you hear Jesus in everything that is going on in this assembly, you're going to be all right. I want you to stand with me. He's here to heal the oppressed. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. Lord, apart from you, we can do nothing. But through God, we shall do valiantly. Because he it is who will trample down our enemies. You're great and great to be praised. With our lips, we will give you praise and honor and glory. For the Lord causes us to triumph. And make manifest the savor of his knowledge in every place. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and His truth endures through every generation. Saints of God, how about this? When you come in His presence, don't look for somebody else. You come to sup with Him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You come to meet Him in a corporate manner. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All eyes and all attention focused in on the Christ. The Son of God. God, I come to give you glory in the house of God. I come to worship you. I come to adore you along with the people of God. He wants the center of attention in this place. Can you join me in giving him praise? Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Master. Do unto your people today what seemed good to you. Heal and deliver the old. Set captives free. Heal sick bodies. Deliver from demonic oppression. Because you can, because you will, because you desire to. One man said, Lord, if you will, you can make me whole clean. 
Jesus says, I will. Be thou clean. Somebody said, Lord, who sinned, this man that was blind or his parents? And Jesus says, neither. But that the work of God should be made manifest. God wants us free. He wants us free today. And I know we've called so many altar calls. And I know that some came expecting a touch through the laying on of hands. But then there were some that came to the respective place called the altar knowing that Jesus' presence was going to meet them there. Some left without being helped and some left and they were helped. It's for you today. He cares so much for his people. And all the lies of Satan cannot change God's mind for you. He is for you. And I remember him telling me, he says, son, I paid a dear price that the souls of my people will be healed. He's our healer. He can do it. He still can do it. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Glory to God. Now, Father, we thank you and turn this portion over to you, your son, Jesus. Thank you for each and every one that's here today. Lift some burden. Lift some burden, I pray, Holy Father. In the name of Jesus, we're going to give you praise and we're going to give you glory. For it's in Jesus' name.